All right, Bang Bang, welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. In studio guest today, I'm joined by uh, Chef Joe Flam, top chef winner, owns Rosemary, the head chef. Uh, Joe, welcome back. How are you? Good to be back, like the new digs, man. Yeah, it's a lot different, huh? Yeah, I hate the location, but it's a great space. <laughs> Why do you hate the location? Let the people know. Oh, my, it's a, it's Wrigley. It's a pain in the ass. Like getting <laughs> here, getting around here, doing anything here. It's just a total pain in the ass. <laughs> so that's what. Um, so you got the the place. In Ro- Is it still new? Do you still call it the new place, Rosemary? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, it's still new. I mean, we're uh, fourteen months in. And it's been, I mean, 14 just insane months mm-hmm. with, like, I mean, we opened last April, so we opened still, like, 50% capacity, full mass, everything. Okay. So you never had, like, a opening, normal, nothing? No, no. It's, I mean, it took, you know, there were points, like, the first summer where we'd get to, like, a normal day where it was, like, I remember there was, like, a three-week period that last summer, remember, where they were like, yeah. no mass, everything's okay, everybody's going to be all right. And we're like, great, this is awesome. I'm like, yeah, we have a full room. And they lasted like three weeks, and they are like, nah, fuck you guys. Like, yeah. Let's, let's run it back. So, Now, did that help places at all, like that you were able to kind of go like like softer launch? like, Or, or was it kind of like you, you were ready, you knew it needed to be done, and it was just kind of a hindrance altogether? I mean, it definitely, I don't think it helped, uh, but it, it, you know, it's, I don't know. It's such, it was such a weird time that you just, you you, know, you kind of rolled with whatever was coming at you. Mm-hmm. But it also, it's like, I think the scarier part was you were like, this is fine to be at half, right? Mm-hmm. But if it went below that, everybody was going to close again. Yeah. And like, you're like, well, you know. Once you start playing that game, you're like, how long can we stay closed for before, like, you just don't reopen? Yeah. So how, that was the scariest part, I think. How how is how is it now, though? Do you think we're kind of rebounded now? Do you think, like, what's... Man, I think if you go, there's certain days, if you go over the West Loop, it's like what it was. You know what I mean? Yeah. Remember, like, when the West Loop got super crazy, like, you're just walking around there. It's so full. Yeah. It's so, like, so many business people, so many people just out and about there, like, going to lunch all day long, you know what I mean, just bustling. It's not that, you know, Monday through Friday anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, but sometimes, like, it seems to be, especially right now, with, like, the weather, if you catch a good Tuesday, everybody wants to go down and be in their office then. And then it's like, okay, this is, you know, like, this weekend, Taste of Randolph, it was, that neighborhood was just banging. Yeah. It was awesome. Now, is that, is that always like but for you guys like like a fine dining place would you consider yourself fine dining no no what would you consider it what would it be well i mean like i, I wouldn't consider it fine dining i mean we're a nicer restaurant you yeah. know what i mean it's not cheap but it's you know i think we're that like like you're i don't even know what you you, you kind of classify those at because they're not fine dining but it's you know a nice restaurant yeah yeah, yeah. it's not quite as like it's a place where you could be a special occasion restaurant, but it'd also be like totally fine coming on Tuesday, sit at the bar, have a bowl of pasta and a beer, and you know, get out. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I always like kind of picking people like years brains about stuff like that. Do you think fine dining will ever like really, if it hasn't shifted already, it will shift downwards like big time? Well, I think there's always big shifts in fine dining and what, how it gets redefined uh-huh. over years, right? So I think it's like, even if you look at geographically how it shifted in Chicago from, you know, like there was a moment where like those, all those old school restaurants, you know what I mean, that went under during the pandemic, like the Spiagas, the Everest, uh, you know, there was Aria back in the day, L2O. Those were all in huge buildings. Mm-hmm. Like that used to be fine dining. It's like, we're going to build this brand new massive building and we're going to put this, you know, uh, Michelin star restaurant in it, like uh, Danny Meyer's place that was, or True was like that too. There were all these big buildings. Like that was of the era. Mm-hmm. And now the idea of like, if you were like, hey, I'm opening a building, you want to put a restaurant on the 11th floor of it? It's like, no, you're out of your fucking mind. Mm-hmm. There's no way we would do a fine dining restaurant there. You know yeah. what I mean? You would be like, oh, we're going to put a club up there. We're going to put a taco place up there that serves margaritas. Like mm-hmm. you know, you'd have a big star rooftop. Yeah. Before you'd have, you know, like Grant Ackett's opening an aviary rooftop mm-hmm. or, you know, you'd be at a Lydia rooftop. Mm-hmm. So I think like you see that shift already, but I think it's just going to be the shift to more to, to smaller fine dining restaurants. And why do you think those places are going into that 11th floor over the fine dining? Just because 
I think that's just what the demand is. I think that's just how it's shifted. I think some of these neighborhoods have shifted where it's like, you know, Streeterville, I think, was very, like, elite for a long time in those places. And now, like, it's somewhat younger. So that's not, you know what I mean, what, you know, 25-year-olds weren't going to Everest. Yeah. 30-year-olds weren't going to Everest, you know, uh -huh. um, or True or some of those places. So, but they're going to, mm -hmm. you know, fucking Hampton Social or whatever, like, you know, to party. So it's like, I think they, you have to, things just naturally adjust. So I think people always, they like saw the alarm, like, oh, fine dining's dead, fine dining's over. And I just don't think that's true, but there's always just going to be a capacity at which a city, you know, especially like Chicago, mm -hmm. which is still like a working class city, can handle it. Yeah. Because how many times a week are you going to go out and eat, you know, a $350 a person dinner? So you think, yeah. So so basically you think there was a bubble and it just, it, it was to be popped at some point and it happened. Yeah, and I don't even know if it was a bubble or just as much as, like, there's just only so much, you know, there's only so much water in that vessel. So if somebody new comes in, yeah. somebody outs, it's, you know what I mean? I don't think that bubble popped drastically in all these. And, I mean, COVID happened, a lot of restaurants went away, obviously. But I think in the five diabetes realm of it, you know, those one, two, three Michelin star restaurants, as you see new, one com new ones come up, old ones go up. And mm -hmm. that's always been true. And so you, you built, you put your spot in, like, the heart of, the restaurant district in Chicago, you would say, right? Yeah, I think, you know, full market, you know, it's weird. I So I opened Girl and the Goat 12 years ago and was staff. I was a line cook there. And when we went out, when we went over to that spot, it was like that used to be the old restaurant row, but Marche had just closed, Vivo closed, Red Light closed, all the restaurants over there had closed. And people were like, why are you going over there? That area is dead. It's like what they told her at the time. And they were like, it's over, Randolph's over. You know what I mean? It's like shitty. It's industrial. And then now, and I mean, to the point of back then where it's like, if you want to get a beer after work, there is nowhere on Randolph to get a drink. Mm -hmm. You could either go to Greek Town and go to like Dugan's or you had to go over to JTAP. But the only bar on Randolph was that, was that the Holiday Club. And it was like, it was a third shift bar. It was like a third shift cop bar. They were open from like 7 a.m. to 4.30 it was yeah, just a daytime one. Yeah, yeah. So it was, you know, really weird. And then, you know, it exploded. And I think, you know, you see that it just, I mean, that whole area is going insane. Yeah. And we like keep pushing west. And uh, so maybe that place, you know, we walked that space that where I built the restaurant for the first time almost four years ago at this point. And at that point, like our the street we're on, on Sagamon, was not as long as it is now. Like, they extended the street, and they built a massive, huge building in the time from us first looking at that space to when we opened. It, I mean, it's wild over there. It's nuts. Like, you just, you can't, like, if you don't go there too much, like, something else is just popping up somewhere. It, it's, it is crazy. So what, what, um, what's, like, a concept, I guess, that, like, intrigues you? Like, what's something that you've, like, looked to do maybe in the future? Well... I think there's a lot of them. You know what I mean? I think concepts to spend a lot, depend a lot on space, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I think the one, like my big, like pie in the sky one, like is like, uh, I go up to like Michigan City, New Buffalo, that area every year. Mm -hmm. Like we call it Southside Hamptons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go out there. Like, I go there too. It's great. It's awesome. Yeah, it's great. And it's like my like five, 10 year plan is like, I want a restaurant out there. I want a spot out there mm -hmm. where it's like, that's my summers. I go up there all summer. Like cook there all summer. Mm -hmm. Like rotate sous chefs out from the city. And just like go back a couple days a week and just be like, have like, you know, that seasonal like shore restaurant. I love there. that. That would just be like, you know what I mean? Like just super fun. Uh, just like, you know, get pastas, maybe pizzas, just like spritzes. And mm -hmm. Like, you know, you make something awesome up there. Do you have a place up there now? No. 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 What's, you know, it's kind of crazy too how we just sit here and we wait all summer. Cause I'm one of those people too. If I had a place, I'd go all the time. Yeah. You know, like I, I, I would go to there, like Geneva, whatever. It's so crazy that we wait all summer and then it's just like people just leave. <laughs> yeah. Like they live in Chicago all summer. It's like, Oh, Chicago summer, Chicago summers. And then when it comes, it's like, I'm going to go here. Right. They're like, you know, your neighbors <laughs> are like, Oh yeah, I'll go up there father's day till, yeah. you know, the kids got to go back to school. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Which is, which is crazy logic on us, but something about it's just different. Like a lake town. It is. You know, and we don't have that Hamptons, that Jersey Shore where, like, everyone goes. We That needs to be built, and there's 
I don't. At least I don't think it's anywhere. Would you say that's any one of these places around here? No, and I think that's. I don't know if that'll become that where it's like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe it has a nightlife, but maybe it does. I don't know. It's 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 so prime for it. Yeah. I agree. Um, but there's also like there's not like those big hotels there. You yeah. Know what I mean, you can't just not. like you have to rent a house, and I think that keeps it charming and good. But it's also like, but I also think like. Michigan City has to like happen as a city, right? Because mm-hmm. there's still parts of that that like totally just are fucking suck. Mm-hmm. And but you're seeing kind of people come in like uh, there's a big brewery up there. I think it's called like Zorn or something mm-hmm. or Zook or something. Some of the Z, but they took over like one of those old warehouses in like downtown Michigan City that was like dilapidated. And they built this awesome, awesome fucking brewery. Oh really? And it's just it's. The space is gorgeous. I think they have a music venue attached to it. The beer's good. Food's good. Um, but I I just spent a bunch of time up there over the winter because like, I got COVID right before Christmas. And so I got it, but my kids and my wife didn't get it. So they were like, you know, she's like, you got to leave. <laughs> you're, you're out. And I was like, well, okay, like where the fuck am I going to go? <laughs> she's like, you can get, go to like, she's like, there's, there's rooms for 60 bucks a night at the Double Tree in Elsa. I'm like, <laughs> I am not spending 14 days <laughs> Locked in a double tree in Elsa. There's just z- like I will. There's no way, dude. They will find me on 294. Like, so I was like, you know what? Found like this, like super divorced dad looking condo, right on the beach in Michigan City for like 70 bucks a night. Okay. Because it was winter. Yeah, yeah, so there was, yeah. Like, nobody up there. Yeah. So it was just like, um, so I spent two weeks up there by myself. Mm-hmm. Just, like, living this super weird lifestyle. Just, like, you know, drinking whiskey and, like, walking on the beach every day. It's, like, my fucking whole life back home is, like, falling apart because, like, <laughs> everyone at the restaurant's getting COVID. We have to close the fucking restaurant. It's just, oh, like, man. fucking mess, bro. Yeah. And I'm just, like, up there. But so, I'm like, I had nothing to do. Yeah. So I would just get in the car and just, like, drive. Mm-hmm. So I would just go to places. I'd be, like, I'd go look at, like, old restaurants that were beaten up and for sale. And I'm, like, sending pictures of, like, my wife and my business partners. I'm, like, I don't know. What do you think? They're, like, dude, we have, like, a fucking crisis on our hands back here at the restaurant we have. And you are, like, trying to buy a restaurant in another fucking state right now. And I'm, like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Pretty, pretty cool guys. And they're, like. You know, like you're out of your goddamn mind. Just thinking of your wife probably stressed as shit trying to wrap all these presents, and you're just looking, sending her pictures. Is a funny admission. Oh yeah, she's home with two kids, <laughs> just like this one. And like the first, the first few days, she couldn't let anyone in the house because she was like, "Oh, well, what if we test positive?" And it was like, "Oh, it was a mess." My, but you're right though. My buddy actually just opened up like a concert venue in Michigan City over there, so I think they're making moves to, uh, to kind of make it a thing. Right, and there's like yeah. that casino. The what's the one? Blue Chip and uh, yeah, there's a uh, Four Winds is the one in New Buffalo. That's the I think the Blue Chip is the one of them is pretty nice. Uh, four, they're they're both decent. I I actually I'll go I go pretty frequently to both of them. Like I'll just I'll get a room and just whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're both Four Winds is nicer though for sure. Yeah, but it's like you know if they can figure out like well why don't they like. You know, these shore places and stuff, they're starting to bring in, like, real chefs to do real things there now. Mm-hmm. Like, they start doing that shit. It'd be fucking cool. It would be cool. Like, you know, if you're like, oh, yeah, like, that's dope. Like, there's awesome restaurants in there, like, cool things. And, like, you know what I mean? Like, if they – I think, like, somebody at some point has to draw the line of, like, this place has a massive Chicago connection, but it, like, acts like it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Like, the only place there's that uh, Farina Supper Club up there. Arena. You ever been there? I don't think I've been there. I just I know there's that one street where there's what's like that. So my wife fucking hates it because they knocked our baby over. But <laughs> it's cool. It's a cool spot. I mean, it was a bad evening the time I went there. They were just like one of those things where it's just like it's like the shit I have nightmares about where you're watching like a restaurant go down in flames. Yeah, really. And I'm just like watching it. I was like, oh, this is fucking not going well for them. Mm-hmm. Like you just tell. Like everyone, when you can see. Everyone is like actually running. You're like, oh, you're so fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you were fucked three hours ago, and <laughs> yeah. now you're just like realizing it. Mm-hmm. And like you're just like, I'm like, like fucking sweating for them. I'm like, this is horrible. But then they, we had our baby, you know, like on top of in the car seat. Yeah, like on top of a chair, and they knocked the chair over. Oh my god. And it was like, oh, uh, like, dude. 
Well, the baby's totally fine. She's in a car seat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? She, but still, though. But she was young. Like, young. Like, two months. That's fucking terrifying. So, like, fucking, I'm there with, like, my wife, my in-laws. Yeah. Fucking shit hits the fan, right? It's mm -hmm. instantaneously. You want to see a woman lose her shit? Fucking knock her baby <laughs> over. <laughs> see what the fuck so, I'm dude. like, look, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> you need to go outside right now. Like, right. I'm like, she's going to, like, fucking fight this girl. Yeah. Like, I'm like, just go outside. Just go, like, you and your mom, just go outside. Just go outside. Uh-huh. And it's just like, dude, disaster. What did the, how did it happen? They were just, it was a total mistake. I felt, honestly, I felt bad for this girl. She's a young girl, <sighs> like high school girl, pouring water, not paying attention. It just knocked it over. It just wasn't paying attention. It was oh just like, oh my God. Oh my God. So it's like <laughs> one of those things, it's like, it's just not this girl's, it was a genuine mistake. She went like running. I felt terrible for her, honestly, because she was probably fucking, you know what I mean? Like rude. Yeah. Can't imagine. The baby's fucking fine. Like, but, so the funny part was, I shouldn't have mentioned the name of that restaurant. Now I kind of feel bad. Uh, but It's so all right. I mean, it's you like the place, though, right? I do. I, would, yeah. I, I honestly would go back. My wife will never ah, go well, back. Well, if you no go back. And there's not many options up there anyway. So. Right. So, like, but I ordered a bottle. I ordered a nice bottle of wine. I was very excited to go out for this dinner. I was like, oh, yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. You know, I never get to go out. This is awesome. <laughs> and so, lady, then there's like 20 other mishaps. Like, we get all our food. Everybody gets their food but me. And they're just like, oh. And it's like, becomes like really obvious, like they didn't even have it fired. It wasn't on the ticket. The guy's like, listen. He's like, yeah, just give me a minute. And I'm like, nah. I'm like, I'm like, he comes back like, you know, five minutes later. I'm like, listen, dude. I go, if it's not fired. And he's like, no, 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 it's working. It was just, you know, I'm like, it's all good. I'm like, I know you missed it. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Like, I just need this meal to end. Because like, <laughs> my wife's fucking crying. Like, everyone here is upset. Like, this is going terribly. Like, I just need this to be over. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, it's coming in a minute. It's coming in a minute. I'll put it. I'm like, don't just fucking. I'm like, dude, <laughs> just go get a check. I was like, it's all good. It's all good. Like, I don't care. I'm not mad. I don't I give a shit, man. I've seen bad nights at a restaurant. I've been a part of them. I have. I know. You've seen it all. hell everyone here is feeling right now. And I don't wish that upon my worst enemy. And I was like, just give me a check. So the manager comes over and she's like, hey, her was a little rough over here. I go, well, you guys, I go, you did knock, you know, you know they, she's like, something like happened. I, I was like, well, they knocked the baby over. And she was like, oh my God. She's like, yeah, I, you know, she like doesn't know what to do because like, what the fuck do you do? You know what I mean? So she comes back a minute later and she just goes, hey, uh, I just wanted to let you know, like, uh, I took care of your bottle of wine because of the whole, <laughs> the whole baby incident. And I was like, I, I'm like, I, everyone else was outside at this point because they could like <laughs> no longer be in the restaurant. And I'm like, like started laughing. And I was just like, okay, sure. Like that was like, I was like, what? This lady's mine. Just thought, you know what? Like, I know I knocked your baby over, but here's seventy-two dollars. Like, <laughs> we're good, right? Like, you know, and it's like, I, you know, you one, you don't. Whatever. I don't need you to fucking cop anything. But it was just like a bizarre thing to pick. Yeah. Like, hey. Like, because, listen, I run a restaurant. If I knock your baby over, and like, I would probably buy your dinner. <laughs> probably. Like, for a long time. Like, you know what I mean? I would be fucking mortified. But, like, it was, dude, it was just fucking bizarre. But uh, that was really off tangent. But, uh, yeah. no, I was... but I would still go back. It's a really cool space. The room is fucking <laughs> sick. Um, and they have some spot here that's out in the burbs here. It's one of the Northwest burbs. But I, don't, I can't remember what it's called. But they were... Elwood? I don't know, maybe. Maybe. You said Supper Club. That's one in like Skokie. So I go there a bit. Is so it I would... Italian? No, it's like a... It's not Italian. It's like this more... one's Italian. Their place here is Italian. Okay. Um, but... It was like they were, I feel like it was the first place that they were like, oh, we should just put an outlet out there because it makes uh, a ton of sets. And like people know them from their that, other spot. Yeah. I can't remember the fucking name of it. Um, and the Burbs. And so they go there. But it's like, you know what I mean? Like it's a nice Italian restaurant, like in the middle of the neighborhood. Like, mm -hmm. in the, like I don't know if that's Long Beach or Michigan City or whatever where that line goes. But it's, it's a dope spot. Yeah. 
just you know they had a, like a horrible night when we were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like I I would go back there. I just couldn't tell my wife I was going there. But that's the thing with those supper clubs, right? Like they're all so cool and like you want to love them, but a lot of times they just kind of fall flat. I feel. At least with those like Wisconsin ones, like that's one of my favorite things is when you go up north, oh, yeah. to one of those places, you try all those supper clubs. They're great, but it's just like I don't know. There's, there's a lot of times, more more often than not, I feel like there's something a little off. I don't know. Well, it's like you know, supper clubs. I feel like are like almost like the dive bars of restaurants sometimes, right? Yeah. And you're like, you have to go into it and just like, no, there's like a thing here. It's like going to a dive bar. It's like you know, you're with that one person. It's like you think I can get a Manhattan? It's like are you fucking an idiot? Like no. <laughs> You can't get a fucking Manhattan right now. Like you're, yeah. you know, they think you have, you know, like white wine. It's like, yeah, you don't want to drink it. Yeah. Like so, I think it's like supper clubs. It's like you have to have a little bit of managed expectations of like this shit's gonna be fire. This is gonna be awesome. Like if you're trying, especially if you're like trying to get something on the menu, you're like, oh, that sounds interesting. It's like get the fuck away from it. Mm. You don't want to think that sounds interesting. You want to think that sounds like they made ninety seven of these today. <laughs> yeah. So just get the thing that everybody else here is getting because that's the good thing. That's the best, yeah. Just and it's get... like, it might need some salt. Well, whatever. <laughs> like, deal with it. You know what I mean? Like, maybe it's, like, not the temperature you ordered. It. It's like, well, you're also in, you know, whatever, Okashosh, Wisconsin. Yeah, and like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, who's cooking back there? <laughs> Either a 17-year-old co- kid or a 79-year-old, you know, woman probably. No like, one in between. Yeah, there's no in between. Yeah. It's not some like, yeah, I graduated culinary school at CIA. I worked at, you know, La Bernadette for two years and now I'm the supper club and, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> wherever. Yeah, yeah. In Galena. No, you're right. Hey, let's take a quick break here to talk to you guys about InnovativeADD.com. That's right. If you're currently getting your ADHD medication from someone other than Innovative Care, you need to stop that right now. And you need to switch to them because uh, Innovative is a real medical clinic. It's not one of those online-only refill services. And uh, they really take the headache out of getting your ADHD medication. They are based here in Chicago, and medical providers, uh, they're uh, medical providers you can trust. And uh, you'll definitely want to use them for your ADHD management. But you can also turn to Innovative for other things related to primary care or urgent care. Simplify your ADHD management with Innovative. After your initial appointments, you can see your provider virtually through telemedicine. Innovative ADHD accepts insurance for evaluations and medication refills. Finally, ADHD care with dignity and compassion. They take insurance, which is the key here, people. Uh, A lot of companies don't do that. Innovative does, so make sure you take that into account. And uh, yeah, try it now at InnovativeADD.com. And remember, you must be a resident of Illinois. InnovativeADD.com. Go check it out. They take insurance. All right, let's get back into the episode. Now, now I, I hate to circle back to that, but now when the baby, was it like a slow tip or was it like a Jenga block going quick down? No, it was a quick down. It was like a, it was just like. That's like probably the scariest moment of your life. Oh, my God. And it was like, well, the baby flipped towards me so I could see her like the whole time. Like, so I was like, you know, I was like, oh, like, and so. I'm sorry to laugh, but it's no, like. No, no, it was like there was nothing else. And I was like, I literally, I went back to work and it was like, I'll like, because I go out to eat when I travel always. And a lot of times I go back and I'll talk in pre shift about, you know, different things that happened, things I liked, things I didn't yeah, yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, I can't believe I have to fucking say this, but I'm going to tell everyone here this. If someone has a baby at their table, be wildly fucking cautious around it. Like, I'm just. Throwing this out here in case any of you, for any reason in your head, I'm like, like treat it like they brought a fucking bomb with them. <laughs> and just like, don't fucking touch it. Don't go by it. Don't like accidentally maybe possibly drop something on it to set it the fuck off. Like, just avoid it. <laughs> just avoid it. That thing's a landmine. Do not step on it. Don't go near it. Don't throw a rock at it and see if it explodes. Like, you know, like... And so I had to tell them all that story. And they're all la- they're like, oh, chef, I'm sorry, we're laughing. I'm like, I don't I mean, what else can you do? Like, it's yeah. crazy. It is crazy. Like, it was like the thing, like, so she was in the, uh, the car seat. Mm-hmm. And so they have these things that go over car seats. That's like, so you put it over so the baby can sleep. Yeah. You know? um, and so we had that over it. And she knocked it over. So the whole thing hit, like, it hit the ground and flipped over. And it was just like, oh, shit. And I was like. I was like, oh, fuck. Like, I knew she was fine, but I knew it was going to scare the shit out of her because, like, you know, your baby's, what, a foot and a half tall? Yeah, yeah. So you're getting dropped from something three times your height. Yeah. Like, if you throw me off a 22-foot roof, yeah, like, I'm going to freak the fuck out, too. scared, yeah. 
Like, especially if I was sleeping mm-hmm. and I woke up. Was she sleeping? Yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck. So it's like I wake up falling or hitting the ground. Like, there's only one thing you do. So she freaks out. Wife freaks out. Oh, dude. Bad. I- Bad situation all around. Worst. <laughs> Worst night out I've had it like I could remember, dude. And it was just like one of those things. I was like, I really kind of like I want to like this place. Great bottle of wine, good wine list, and it's like you know finding good bottle of wine, <laughs> good wine list up there was tough, especially like Italian wines. Yeah, it was fucking, it was like a baby Gaia for you know it was awesome. I was like I. Like, I think I chugged the whole bottle of wine myself because I was just like, oh, this is going horribly. Like, you know what I mean? And I knew, I was like, we have like, I'm like, we just got to get out of here. We just got to get out of here. Bro, your poor wife, she probably is scarred forever from that. She's oh. probably fucking boxing the waiter out like Carlos Boozer when someone's oh, passing Oh, no, out. it's like, it's, you know, now like the baby can never, I mean, now the baby, she's, she's not, she'll be one in a couple of weeks. Yeah. But it's like, it's just like inside, like, you know, like, protected like there's no way anyone could get near yeah yeah she's you got to put her in a good spot that's like more conscious of it yeah it was just it was crazy though it was just like one of those things where i was like that's man. wild that and your like, son i see your ig stories all the time he i feel like he'd pop right back up he'd be good to go yeah <laughs> like, he would have broke the floor yeah he's he's great he's a monster man um that's unreal so how many times has that happened to you then like running your own place and working in the industry for so long like how like when you sit down do you usually know if it's going to be good or not you you know i'm always like i'm giving it I, i'm always like when i go out i'm a very like i'm happy to be out yeah yeah yeah. you know what i mean like i'm happy to not be responsible and not do it but there's signs sometimes you see where you're just like hmm, this is gonna be a tough day mm-hmm. like you know what i mean where you're just like we're gonna be here in a minute like everybody strap in, order another drink. Yeah. Like because this is like I was one place for they sat me and I could just see the kitchen and I could see their their expo rail. And I remember I was like, oh, there's not a lot of people on that line. And then you just see like ticket, ticket, ticket. And there's dudes stacking them. Just none of them are going away. And I'm like Phew. I was like mm-hmm. I just like looked at Hillary, I was like, this is like I'm like, we're going to have three drinks before <laughs> I go, we see. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> She's like, what? I'm like, and it, you know, sure enough. And it was like, it was fine, but it's just like sometimes you just see it go down and you're like, oh, dude, this is, like, you feel bad. Yeah, yeah. You're like, should I go back? Yeah, do you want, like, you does know what it mean? make you want to get back there oh, and help dude, out? Yeah, like all the time. When I'm in food service situations, I see it like going poorly. It's like, you, I'm just like, hop in. <laughs> like, you guys need a hand? Like, because you you felt that when it's like, it is the worst feeling of like being on a station, you're getting destroyed and you're just getting killed so hard that you stop putting out food. Someone's like, what do you need? And you're like, we just can't do this. We're, we're fucked. Like there's like this moment in your head where you're just like, I remember it was, you know, everyone has had this service. Mine was New Year's Eve, 2007 going into 2008. It's where the pizza station at table 52. And I was like, first turn, chef came up, I'd get annihilated. He's like, what do you need? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, just tell everyone to leave. I can't fucking cook this food. I'm like, we're fucked. We're fucked. I, I have no idea. I have no idea where I am. Everything's on fire. It was just like, it was like, <laughs> just like spitting in circles. Just like, ah, oh, like, you know, like Richie Tenenbaum moment. You yeah. Know, one fucking shoe out, hitting tennis balls over the net. Like, it was. I need everything. It was, just, it, it was like the worst feeling in the world. Like, yeah. And so it's like, when you see it happening, you're just like, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> what are some of those other signs where you, where you sit down and you look around and you're like, ah, this might be. I mean, there's time I mean, now where it's like, I I went to, God, there's a fucking chain that opened called like Bocaria on Fulton. And I would say the name because I don't care because it's a chain. Uh, <laughs> but we went there, we sit down, like one person came to the table, they asked us, well, you want sparkling or still water? We're like, whatever, sparkling. He's like, cool. Doesn't come back. Somebody else comes up. They're like, it just starts pouring us flat water. They're like, do you want sparkly water too? We're like, yeah. We told that person. Like, okay, cool. They leave. Another person comes up. And is like, can I ask us the same question? We're like, okay. We've been there like 15 minutes at this point. Mm-hmm. We've talked to three people about water. We've all asked the same question about water, but no one's given us the actual water we want. And so if I have a third person, I'm like, yeah, like, just whatever. We'll just give us a couple glasses of wine, you know, a couple glasses of rosé. They're like, all right. 
And then like another person came over who was like a manager. It was like, you guys like uh, want to get a drink order going? And I was like, what the fuck? And then I was just like, oh, none of these people are talking to each other. Yeah. And I just like looked at. I was with uh, I was with actually one of my floor floor managers now, uh, my guy Eddie, and uh, I was actually offering him the job. And I was like, we should leave. I go if we try to have lunch here, we're gonna be here for two hours. I go it's gonna take. I go we are not gonna see those glasses of wine for fifteen minutes. And mm-hmm. I go, then we'll just get the check. I was like, because this is going to be a fucking disaster. Mm-hmm. Like, if they can't figure out water, like, how to get us a glass of wine right now. And it's like, it might have been fine. And it's not like they were doing anything egregious. It was just like, obviously, like, they were new or they were training or whatever it was. Yeah. But it was like, this isn't what I'm trying to do right now. Yeah. Like, I got 45 minutes and I was like, there's no shot in hell. That it's going to happen. We're going to be out of here at the time. Yeah. And so it's just sometimes you know that. Yeah. Where it's just like, it's usually for me, it's like a timing thing where I'm like, mm, this isn't going to be, like, we got to be somewhere. We got something going on where it's just like, there's no way you're going to hit it. Mm-hmm. And you can just tell. Yeah. A drinks is, a, it feels like a good, good bar. Like if, it, if how the drinks go. Then you because should. if they're not, because then if they're, if they are from the time you sat down, weeded, then you're like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. this is like me or asking them for more shit. Is not going to make them less busy. Yeah, there's no way. But what? There's a fine line, though, right? I mean, obviously, I'm sure you're always nice because you know what it's like. But there's a fine line between like, oh, like let them work that out. Like I know what's going on for you. I'm sure. Right, and I think there's a balance of like, okay, sometimes you're like, yeah, there's a learning curve, do shit, and you know, I think looking at like, but there it was like, okay, well, even the manager was involved, so it wasn't like this was just like a one person thing. Like sometimes you just get. Bad person who's having a bad day, whatever yeah. it might be. You know what I mean? Like fucking, it, you know, they're just having a tough shift. And I'll, I'll easily be like, hey, you know, whatever. Fine. Deal with it. I don't care. Um, but like when you see it to the managerial level, you're like, there's an operational issue here. Uh, yeah. Like no one knows how to fucking run what's going uh-huh. on right now. So this is not going to get better because the person who's supposed to be in charge of making it better is like part of the fucking problem. Yeah. That's what I'm like. We just need to leave. Because mm-hmm. it's like, I don't want to sit through this. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know what I mean? I'm like, I don't want to complain. I don't want to, you know, write a shitty review or something. It's just like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to spend an hour and a half doing this. Mm-hmm. And be like, kind of fucking annoyed the whole time. Yeah. So what's your, what's your least favorite thing to, uh, what's your least favorite operation within the restaurant to run? Or what do you find to be the most challenging? Uh, plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. Culinary school should just only exist of how to fix shit. Like if they're like you want to own a restaurant, they should you should be like, this is how you fix a drain, this is how you fix a dishwasher, this is how you replace a fucking thermal coupler on a deep fryer, this is how you fix an oven. That's what it should be. That's what you should learn. If they taught you that, it would fucking save us hundreds of thousands of dollars. But they don't teach you that. No, and then so it's like it's 9 p.m. on a Friday, and like well, you know I or it was fucking a week ago, when one of my buddies is there, and he's like, hey, he's like. Uh, so you got some problems downstairs. And I'm like, what do you mean, Mikey? He's like, yeah, 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 go down there. And it's fucking raining soapy water out of the fucking vent. And I'm like, because the ne- smoothie shop next door had poured soapy water down the wrong fucking thing. And you're like, it's like, this is the shit that you're dealing with where it's like, you know what I mean? Like, we're like, oh, yeah, you get sick of cooking. It's like, no, I wish I had the time to get sick of cooking. I get sick of calling plumbers to fix shit. Yeah. Or like, you know, those are those are the challenging things, the things you can't control. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, something breaks, something happens, you know, like, and, you know, always like the weird variable of people of like, you know, you just never know. Yeah. Like we had the tornadoes last week and like half the people freaking out. Be like, what, what are we going to do? Like, you know, people we had a full patio. Yeah. So like half the people on the patio <laughs> are like, well, what's the plan? The other half of the people on the patio are like, we're not leaving. <laughs> Like, I waited two months for this reservation. <laughs> like, I will sit here. And it's like, we got to a point. You know what I mean? The sirens, the river is like, Meh. my wife's calling me. She's like, what? Uh, she's like, the sirens are going off down there? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, what are you guys doing? I'm like, well, I'm, honestly, I'm standing outside looking at the sky. She's like, you, like, Midwestern assholes. Like, <laughs> uh, so finally got to the point. I was like, we can go up to these tables. I'm like, you have to go inside. <laughs> but you have to go inside now. They're like, well, you know, wait it out a little long. I'm like, no, no, it's time. like you go inside. 
Like, go get the fuck inside right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I felt like I was, like, yelling at my kids in the yard. Like, <laughs> get in the house. Yeah. Done playing. Like, <laughs> so, that, you know, so it's, like, it's weird shit like that where you're, like, you're, like, this is, like, just the weird intangibles that you're never thinking about. Them. Yeah, yeah, always, yeah. Always, always wild cards thrown yeah. at you. Not for sure, because, I, I mean, I, I didn't expect that answer for sure, like, at all. Like, I thought it'd be something else. Is there something appliance-based? Like, what, what always breaks appliance wise or something like what what utensil what's what's something that you're like this fucking thing well you gotta like you gotta imagine too is like all this shit is nothing's made to be really work at a restaurant right Mm -hmm. imagine taking your stove at home and just running it for 16 hours a day every day yeah like how fast that thing would shit out at you you know what i mean yeah you're like i'm just cooking this thing and you are just ripping it Uh uh-huh just like full tilt for 16 hours a day you just run, you just destroy everything. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, we're a really busy restaurant. And it's just like, so it's just, things just break. Mm-hmm. And like break it drives you nuts. Because like plates, glasses, like you go, people steal shit. Like we have these mini coops, they're really cute. Like lose 10, 12 a week. Yeah. And you're just like. What do you mean? What do you, what do you, what mini coop? Yeah. Like, like a, you know, a coupe glass, mm-hmm. like for champagne. Okay. Yeah. They're like mini ones. We send out like mini champagne or mini cocktail in them. Ah, uh, okay. But they also fit in a purse. Yeah, they do. And it's just like one of those things where you're just like, stop fucking stealing shit, Stop people. taking shit. Like you yeah. can't complain about how expensive restaurants are if you guys keep stealing shit. That's a good point. Like it makes things expensive. We, we got a guy pe- at the company. He takes a steak knife every steakhouse he goes to. What do you think of that move? Dude, I would put it through his fucking hand. <laughs> <laughs> I had my old GM. I had a chef from another restaurant in town. And I knew this fucking kid because he worked for me for a minute. And him and his girlfriend stole a shit ton of silverware from Spiage when we were working there. Yeah. And my GM was like, he's like, There's, this shit was like 20 bucks a piece. Oh, no. That's and he was fucking... like, no, nah, fuck that. My GM followed them out. He's like, hey. He's like, give it back. And they were like, they're drunk. And they were like, what? He's like, the silverware. And the purse. He's like, he's like, dude, we're running 90 person service up there. He's like, you think we don't notice 20 pieces of missing silverware off one table? Yeah. He's like, you run a restaurant. Oh, and they went to different tables and they were scooping No, no, they were taking it all from their table. But it's like, I mean, it's, there's so many people yeah, touch your yeah, table. Yeah. Everyone notices Yeah. when there's two people having a dinner and it's like properly cleared service. Like, oh, you don't have a fork anymore? Yeah. Like, and at fine dining restaurants, you do full, you don't do partial clears. Yeah. Right? So you would never just clear someone's fork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever. Uh huh. And this guy ran a fine dining restaurant, so he fucking knew that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, so you're like, tell us, dude. He's like, give us the, you know, like, I know you took it. Like, don't be an asshole. Did He's they like, give it back? Oh, uh, yeah, you know, it was just, we thought it was really cool. It's like, you run a restaurant. Uh. But that's, it's just like, yeah, like taking a steak knife from every steakhouse you go to. It's like, Bro, just buy it. Yeah, you can yeah. afford a steak dinner, buy a steak knife from there. Yeah. They probably sell it to you for $10. Mm-hmm. Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. I, I, what about like uh, anything you're like, all right, whatever, like the dip cup or something, you know, the uh, like the ketchup cup. Yeah, you're like, all right, you're, 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 that's fine. That thing. Oh, like 10 it's cents. like if I'm just like left <laughs> and I was like, I'm just going to take something out of bar stool before I go. <laughs> hey, oh, man, it's just a microphone, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, shit ton of these things floating around. Maybe I grab one of these cameras. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you'd be like, "What the fuck, dude?" Like, yeah. that would be—it's insane. If you think about this concept anywhere else, it is. If you went to anyone else's place of business, and you just were like, hmm, "I'm gonna take some shit from here before I leave," yeah. it's like, why? Like, if you—if I was here and you guys gave me a glass of water and I took that glass with me and stole it, you'd be like, "That was crazy." Yeah. You would talk about that for a long time. You'd be like, yeah. remember that time Joe Flab came in? Yeah. He like just took that class. We gave him home with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he didn't say anything about it. He just stole it. You'd be like, that was fucking, that guy's not well. <laughs> like you'd be worried about me. There's like you'd be like, like you talk about it for a long time. But for some reason at a restaurant, it's like, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. That's just, you know, that's just Tommy. He steals steak knives. And it's like, but in any other regard, that's a completely fucking insane thing. And it, you're right. You're right. And, but like. Listen, I, I I don't take shit from restaurants, but you know, obviously, I've seen people do it or whatever. Yeah, and I I I hadn't thought of it as super fucked up, and now our conversation, I'm like, yeah, it is kind of fucked up to just 
You know, like I don't know how much those coops are a piece, but like you know, it's it's not great. Yeah, not that it's cheap. Yeah, it's not that much. Like yeah. you know, so it's just like one of those things where it's like everybody does. It's like yeah, it's fine. But if you think about yeah. doing it in any other place, yeah, it wouldn't it's be a fine. wild, insane thing to do. It is. You're right. If you just like walked into a law firm and like your buddy was like, yeah, you could staple that. You're like, cool. And you just took the fucking staple with you and you <laughs> left. You'd be like. Dude, Eddie's a fucking maniac. Like, you yeah, mean, like don't invite that guy up here ever again. <laughs> like, that is like some sociopath shit. Yeah, he's a crazy guy. Holy shit. Damn, all right. I feel like you're letting off some steam, Joe. I like this. <laughs> I, anything else? It's really fucking champing your ass right now? No, man. No? It's, you know, we're, listen, we're, we're 14 months into this restaurant, and it's, you know, it's kicking ass. Our team's fucking awesome. It's labor's hard right now. Yeah. But it's like the people we have are fucking awesome. It's so good. Um they just they just just destroy it. Um, is it getting better labor wise? Hard to tell. Yeah. Hard to tell. You know what I mean? It's just I don't know. It's 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 just fucking weird. Like there's too many and this was coming a long time, but there's too many restaurants and not enough cooks, and I think it was just pandemic killed most of the culinary schools. But it also, you know, Chicago not being open, like, you know, this place thrives off. I mean, Wrigley, this this area is all, you know, people move here from all the Big Ten schools, right? Yeah. Restaurants work the same way. You're getting all the same people. They didn't go to those schools, maybe. But, like, you're still, like, if you want a big restaurant job and you're from Iowa, Minnesota, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, you either, you know, you're going out to New York or you're going to Chicago. Most of them, they go to Chicago because they mm -hmm. want to stay quasi-local. And they work here for years and then they kick it back home. Mm -hmm. Well, that didn't happen for two years. Yeah. So it's like weird. And now I think that's starting to come back, which is huge. Yeah, I bet. Because that's like the lifeblood of this industry here is that people who move to Chicago from other places. Yeah, I know. That, that, yeah, that's another thing. I, had, I, I just thought, you know, people just weren't working for whatever re obviously COVID like you said but it just feels like it'd be more replenished by now yeah I think just there's such like uh you know like any other resource that gets swallowed up really quick mm -hmm. like everybody's just grabbing as hard and as fast as they can too yeah so there's like you gotta hire you gotta hire you gotta hire mm -hmm. so it's a weird but you know we've been fortunate enough that we 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 have enough you know what I mean to keep it going and make it work what about supply chain? Have you guys been getting hit by that pretty hard at all? Or no? Oh, dude, it's so dumb. Yeah. It's so dumb. Everything's so expensive. It just yeah. like, we were like, oh, it'd be cool to run lamb chops. And the guy I buy lamb from was like, no. Don't even think about it. He was like, I, no. He's like, the people I sell, that I've been selling lamb chops to for 10 years, I'm having a short. He's like, if I have to hop you in on it too, he's like, you. He's like, dude, I will do it. But he's like, I will like basically like fuck you over on this all the time. Wow. He's like, just. He's like, if you keep doing the shoulders, the shoulders are great. Like, do the shoulders. Uh-huh. Which is crazy. It's like, you know, same as, like, you know, cars now. We go to a car dealership, and they're like, yeah, we don't have anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like that weird where it's like, you know, it used to be with our purveyors. They're always coming in. Oh, you got to try this. You got to try this. And now yeah. they're like, not even bringing you stuff because they're like, yeah, we don't know. Yeah, you yeah. Like that lamb chop guy. He's not giving away any freebies now. <laughs> right, where normally they'd be like, dropping off lamb samples all the time. Oh, what are you guys thinking about switching the chops? Because they're more expensive. Yeah. So they want to sell you the chops. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's great. You know what uh -huh. I mean? Like 37 bucks a pound, whatever they are. Damn. So that's kind of probably hurting restaurants' ability to adapt as well if they wanted to, right? Yeah. So it's, it's a weird new world of restaurants we're living in for sure. But, you know, like, there's exactly like anything else. Something I had to give. Yeah. Uh, but, you know. It's it's good to see like Fulton coming alive again, mm -hmm. that neighborhood like kicking ass, and just it makes you excited for for what's to come, I guess. Yeah, and, and so so Rose, are you looking like, I mean, I don't know, you don't got to say it if you don't want to, but is there going to be more spots here soon, or what, what do you think? You're we're always looking, this? you know what I mean. There's always, I think right now we're labor where it's at. It would be, that would be the hardest thing about if you know we wanted to do another restaurant, is figuring out how to how to staff that. Yeah, uh, but. Uh, always looking, you know, when I, anyone's ever like, Hey, I want to talk to you, you know, we have space or whatever. I always have the conversation. I'm always curious. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's always just kind of one of those things. You never know when you see that space where you're just like, fuck, like this is yeah. gotta do it. 
This is it. You know, I mean, we saw this space for Rosemary, and I was like, this is it. Mm -hmm. This is it. This is perfect. And you're happy with it? Everything's going well, though? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's been, it's been super awesome. Like, it's been just beyond my wildest dreams. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To finally get to that point where it's like, you know, it's like this is my literal dream to open this restaurant. You finally get that point and it happens. You're like, you know what? Like, like this is awesome. Yeah. That's great, man. That's awesome. Well, go check it out, Rosemary. I know you got to run, so we'll uh, we'll wrap this up. But Rosemary West Loop, what's – I mean, obviously you need reservations, like you said. People are waiting. Uh, yeah, we the resos for sure, uh, but um, we the bar is always first come, first serve. Okay. So if you show up right at 5, sit at the bar, or you can put your name in, go you know, maybe drink around the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Go do that. Go check that out. Um Oh, I, what, what, how about an underrated spot too? You want uh, the, the, in the city you think is underrated that that deserves some light. I think I'm going to give you a couple of Italian spots. Okay. that I think are underrated. Osteria Lange, Logan Square. Okay. Awesome, phenomenal wine list. Really, really good food. Um, you know, I went back to Piccolo Sogno after about man, it must have been ten years since the last time I was there, and that place is still kicks ass. Mm -hmm. Like you forget, you're like, oh, yeah, this place is just, like, it's like a workhorse Italian restaurant. It's so good. You know mm -hmm. what Tony, Tony Priorello does over there. I think that one, I think that one gets underrated. I think so. You know what I mean? Just because it's been there. I mean, they're still busy. They still are doing really well, but people, like, forget, you know what I mean? It's not, like, the hot new thing. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a really, really awesome one, I think. Okay, good. Well, there's a couple. Go check those out, too. What else, Joe? Anything else you want to get out there? Uh, I think this is. You know, we were talking about the White Sox earlier. And you're like, you know, me and Dave were talking about how frustrated they are. Yeah. I, But I think all the Cubs fans out here are fucking lying if they're saying your team's not more frustrating. Well, I, the expectations are wildly different. Yeah, but they shouldn't be. It's stupid. It's like, I feel like they're all getting hosed, and they're like, it's okay. It's okay. We love it, Daddy Ricketts. Like, no, I, there's there's a degree of frustration, I think, but it's just more but so. But they should be way more frustrated. But they're trying to play it off. Like, oh, it's like it's a rebuild. It's like the Dodgers don't rebuild. Yeah. Red Sox don't rebuild. I, I get your point. I think it went from – instead we took like a pain reaction, you know, where it was like, oh, man, like – I can't believe that blew up faster than we thought. You know what I mean? It's right. Like, we thought we had the foundation to a house for, you know, 20 years. And it was like, ah, oh, the roof went. You know, right. Now you guys are trying to, like, plumbing. talk to me about Frank the Tank Swindell. <laughs> Isn't he Is great? It's like he's yeah. throwing 44-mile-an-hour fastballs and getting taken yard. You're like, ah, oh, yeah, what a guy. It's like, you guys used to have Anthony fucking Rizzo. Hey, what are I you like, talking about? Everyone up here is insane right now. I like Frank the Tank. Be nice to him. <laughs> I, I I don't have a problem with the guy. He comes in. I love to make him dinner. I know, but I'm, I'm just kidding. you know what I mean, like. Yeah, but it's different. I mean, what the problems you guys have? Are, I mean, the problems we have are it's a shit show down there. It's far more frustrating at this. And it's point. like I think the most frustrating thing about them. It's like fine, if they're going to be bad. Just be bad. Lucy gets fired. We move on. You know what I mean? You'd still have a core. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To build off of, but they're sitting in this like purgatory, fucking space of mm -hmm. like. It's just like like we're dragging our nuts on the sidewalk. That's what I was shocked to see last year. Like Dave here, and there was a, a bunch of other Sox guys that came out, the 108 guys and everything. And, and everyone was, like, happy, which I, uh, that's great. Like, you know, besides the pandemic year, uh, that A series, who cares? You know, that was a weird year. But everyone's happy, but they're like, oh, no, it's fine. Like, this is – there's things for years to come. It's like, dude, it don't work like that. Like, you got to – the window – you don't know the window. It could be fucking huge. It could be small. Nobody knows the window. You Like, yes, for all intents and purposes, the window looks huge, but I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, no, I know. I, and I think this know, year too. has been scary for them. And you're like – and, like, the the teams that are still – you know what I mean? It felt – somebody said it a while back. I forget what I was listening to. They were like – you know, the Sox are almost like the Bulls this year. Mm-hmm. Where it's like they're still getting the shit kicked out of them by really good teams. And it's like some of that is just like because they're not a really good team like those really good teams where they're just stacked full of, yeah, you know, just more depth. Yeah. No, I hear, I hear you. And that's what like, like look at the Cubs. We thought our window was going to be crazy. In the end, it was really three years. Right. It was three years, 15 to 17, you know. It was really like those were our best teams. And I think in baseball, it's just so, I think, so much harder. Because yeah. that season's so long. Yeah. The attrition's so great. To try to, like, keep those, like, the ability to, like, repeat. Like, I just, 
in my mind, like thinking of like, you know, we work a job, we're going to go out and do it every night, right? And it's like the hardest part is like keeping everybody on that edge every night. Yeah. Right? It's got to it be is. the best. And so like coming off a World Series year, like the idea of like having to try to keep that mm-hmm. through a whole season, redial it in for the playoffs. Yep. Like because you can't. There's no way, you know, you can manufacture that that magic of, you know, that 16 team, right? Where yep. it was for everything. And it's like, and I think when it's like, you know, because same as the White Sox, when you have that gap like that, it's not like those teams where they win every 10 years, like the Yankees or something, where they're like, they win and they're like, oh, we're back to dominance. Yep. We're going to go back and win again. And they pick up steam. You know what I mean? Like the Cubs, I felt like they were like, and the Sox too, a little bit. You know, it was like, oh, we won. Now we can fucking relax. Yeah. No, I, I, it's I, for for sure, especially with with those guys. I mean, you're you're breaking a curse that was over 100 years. Right. Old, so know? as much as I'm sure they were giving it all, going 110 percent every night, like there's just no way you have that same edge. No, and that goes for like everything in life, right? Right. Like like they always say it with fighters. Yeah, like exactly. Once those guys get paid, for sure, they never fight the same. Yeah, it's hard to do road work and set and sheets. Sleeping yeah. in sand sheets. You know, it's just tough, you know? Yeah. You get to restaurant 10, are you going to go as hard on number 11? Right, yeah. yeah. I don't know. You, you can't say you, you it for hope, sure. You hope I do. Yeah, you, know you know what I mean? So. But it's like, but is it going to be, you know, hopefully, you know, you, yeah, I'm doing a good enough job that where I'm not like, okay, well, it's like restaurant one where I work, you know, 55 days in a row and, yeah, yeah. you know, uh-huh. killing myself. But no, I feel you. Well, well, Joe, thanks for coming in. Always a pleasure. I like bullshit, and we got to do this more. I'm trying to get more guys like you in here to kind of shoot the shit. Thank time, man. And uh, shout out to your daughter. Hope she's doing all right. Yeah, she's doing great. All right, good. Turns one in a couple of weeks. Good to hear. Happy good birthday, sir. And for everyone listening, look out for that fucking baby seat, you know? Don't knock them over. Don't. Don't. Just pour the water <laughs> around it. Just walk around it. Pour the water. Unbelievable. All right. Thanks, Joe. Uh, that's it, everybody. Go check out Rosemary in the West Loop. Um, we'll see everybody tomorrow.